Agent-based is the newest installer in the ranks of OpenShift platform. Positioned alongside IPI and Assisted Installer, it aims to blend the best features of both advanced customization and simplicity. But there's more to it. The agent-based installer excels in disconnected environments and can be configured for seamless zero-touch provisioning. In the next few minutes, I'll guide you through the entire installation process. Before we get into the details, let's start by understanding the architecture. We're going to start with three controllers for high availability. All-in single node is also supported, and for those seeking compactness with high availability, consider the three-node controller worker architecture. For production, it's more common to have a dedicated workers. The rest of the requirements are fairly standard. DNS server and two A records, API VIP, and a wildcard A record for the ingress. DHCP server is optional, and also internet access is optional, as long as we provide local mirrored image registry. The installation process is mostly based on CLI, so it's time to put on your command line hero hat. We will start with getting appropriate binaries. You can find them at console.redhat.com, full link in the description down below. Select run agent base installer locally, download the installer and copy your pull secret. I'm going to run the installer from my Linux box, but you could also use a Mac if you have one. Create an installation directory and dump your installation file in there. You will also need to install nmstate dependency. There are two main configuration files that need to be pre-configured. Install config and agent config. Let me walk you through them both, starting with the install config. In the top section of your install config file, you set up your DNS domain and cluster name. Next is the number of workers and controllers. In my case, I'm setting three for both. Then in the networking section, you want to configure address space to be used by Kubernetes. The machine network is where you define your bare metal network. The network type will almost always be OVN Kubernetes, which is the newest and the default. Finally, the two virtual IPs for the API and ingress. At the bottom of the file, paste your pull secret that we've copied earlier and the SSH public key to be injected in the nodes. We're ready to move on to a second config file, agent config. In here, we need to reference our cluster name and specify the rendezvous IP, which should match the IP of one of the controllers. Finally, the host section is where we can granularly define our OpenShift nodes, including network interfaces and MAC address, disk that we want to boot from, and custom IP configuration. Now repeat for remaining controllers and workers. Let's create a new working directory and copy our configs. The installer will delete them with the next step, so it's just a good idea to have copies. We can now generate the bootable CoreOS ISO files. Mount the ISOs to your machines and power them on. Ensure the boot order is set to boot from the removable media first. That's all there is to it, at least for the standard installation. We could customize it further by providing a disconnected image registry or configure the GitOps model with zero-touch provisioning. For now, let's just monitor our installation. We can do that in two phases, the bootstrap host process and the final steps of the installation. Once you're finished, save Cube admin credentials in a secure place, then get to your OpenShift dashboard and enjoy your new shiny OpenShift platform. Man, I wish all open source installers were this easy. Yes, you know who you are, the other installers. The challenge questions of the day is which is better, booting with the ISO mount or booting with the Pixie server? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope this video has been useful and thanks for watching.